Okay, full send, this is my fault. We spoke about this article two days ago, and it was kind of funny talking about what Eugene Melnick said, admitting to the fact that he straight up lied to the media about how he wanted to re-sign guys like Eric Carlson and he wanted to bring back Stone and all those guys and he was in a position where he was like, yes, we want to keep this core, but then he was like, nope, we traded them all away. That was our plan from the beginning, man. We traded away Broussard, Carlson, Stone, Torres, all of our good players. Yep, they're gone. That was the plan and we lied to the media in order to boost their trade value. That was the video we made two days ago, and the article that we pulled actually had so many other quotes talking about Eugene Melnick and his thoughts on the Senators, but this angle is something that I just completely missed, even though it was blatantly right there in front of me in the article as well. So we're making a second video here on Eugene Melnick today from his comments earlier celebrating the Ottawa Senators, what, 30th anniversary or something like that, and... We're talking about the Senators and their overall, uh, let's just say, what's the word we want to use? Performance. Performance, yeah, that's a great word. Performance for 2020-2021. Now, we've spoken about the Senators before and what exactly they probably would be able to do for the 2020-2021 season, and I guess everybody kind of has the same common consensus when it comes to Ottawa in what would appear to be a... Canadian division. A Canadian division including Toronto, Montreal, Ottawa, of course, then you have Winnipeg, Edmonton, Calgary, and Vancouver. Everybody kind of thinks the same, and everybody kind of says that the Senators are going to finish last. Not because the Senators are a bad team, but just because even though they did improve, even though they are a better team today than they were a calendar year ago, the other teams in Canada just got better too. Vancouver, supposedly is going to be better with another year of Pedersen and Hughes. They have Schmidt. They have Holtby. Okay, cool. Flames. They got themselves a great goaltender in Markstrom. A nice shutdown demon in Tanev. Sure, they lost out on some stuff, but they are still probably in a similar situation than they were last year, and last year they were still better than Ottawa. Edmonton, forward depth. They added a whole bunch of that. Winnipeg, Paul Stasny. Help out Patrick Laine on that second line. Awesome to see. You have Toronto that made a whole bunch of splashes. TJ Brody, Zach Bogosian, Wayne Simmons, Joe Thornton. We'll see how these guys help out their squad. You have Montreal, who everybody has been pegging as one of the better teams out there. Hey, Tyler Toffoli, Josh Anderson. Nice, good acquisitions. Edmondson as well. All these other teams in Canada have gotten better. And as a result, everybody's like, yeah, Ottawa, even though you guys got Matt Murray, you guys got Dadnov, you guys got Branson, you guys got Watson, you guys got Tim Stutzla, you guys have some very good young players that are going to be better next year than they were last. Last year, you guys are still going to be last. Sorry about that, bud. But hey, it's that interview with Eugene Melnick coming out here to save the day. Because if you go over some of these comments, Eugene Melnick kind of backtracks a little bit. And I say backtracks because that's the best word I want to use in this situation. He goes from what we said a few weeks ago where he said he believes the Senators will win a cup in the next four years. And he kind of goes around and he says this. We have turned the corner. We just now need to execute on what we have. This is the team. With what we have right now, I believe we can win a Stanley Cup already. And that's without adding some veterans, which is what we plan to do. Okay. Everybody has been saying Ottawa's gonna be last in an all-Canadian division. But not Eugene Melnick, man. Eugene Melnick is coming out here and saying, yep, with the team that we have now, we can win a Stanley Cup. We can win today, guys. We want to add veterans, but we haven't done that yet. And even still, without the veterans, we can win the Cup. Think about it like this. An 18-year-old Tim Stutzla, Brady Kachuk, okay, cool. Evgeny Dadanov, okay, cool. Matt Murray out there. All added onto this team, plus a whole bunch of other veteran guys, which we're going to get to the quotes about that, don't worry. Is this team better than Toronto? Is this team better than Montreal? Is this team better than the Dreisaitl, McDavid, Nuge, Yamamoto, Edmonton Oilers? Is it better than the Vancouver Canucks, led by JT Miller, Elias Patterson, Brock Besser, etc.? I don't know. 
Eugene Melnick says that he thinks his team is good enough to win the cup now, so I guess he thinks they are. But, talking about veterans, talking about acquisitions, let's go down a little bit more into this article and see what exactly the plan is for the Senators in 2021, because oh boy, the plan is laid out right here. We will be a team that's active at the trade deadline, and not as sellers, but as buyers, just like we used to be. If you look at my track record on spending on players, we were always up there. Okay, pause. Yeah, we know that Eugene Melnick hasn't really been the... What, what do I say? The highest, I guess. He says up there. The highest on the chart when it comes to paying the good players the good money. And that's just mostly in recent memory. Not saying that's how it's been long term. Eugene Melnick's been around for 17 years with the Ottawa Senators. He's had a lot of time to change that face. But in the most recent few years, that's the entire reason we saw all these trades with all the Ottawa good guys where they traded away their top six players purposefully because that was the plan. To get worse, to rebuild, and to lie to the media's faces about it so they can boost the guy's trade value. Okay, let's continue over here. They say they were always up there when it comes to spending on players. We were never at the top, but we were always right there or around the center. Now we're going to say somewhere in the center, depending on where it's at. Our budgets are always somewhere around $70 million, which is in the center. I don't make any money out of this team. I just want to break even. What we have is good enough, but I feel we've got the ability to make it better. We're going to need a little bit of luck. It's the same thing in horse racing. But if we want to win at that exact time in June, you've got to have players firing on all cylinders, limiting the number of injuries you have, which means you have to players in shape and taken care of properly. He then goes on talking about veterans and playoff champions, making sure his players learn quickly and that they're ready to be champions. And I just read it and I'm like, okay... Okay, the Senators are going to be buyers in 2021. The Senators are in a position where Melnick already believes today they're a legitimate Stanley Cup contender, and that's kind of why I said in the title, you know, Eugene Melnick does it again. It's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. I don't even know what I want to talk about. Like, the Senators were, what, the second worst team in the NHL last year? Like... I don't know if I would say that they're probably ready to win the cup right now. I don't know. Maybe in like five years you can say that. I mean, I don't want to guarantee anything in four years like Melnick did, but I think in five years once Tim Stutzla, Jake Sanderson, Josh Norris, Shane Pinto, and all the other really good players they have, Thomas Shabbat's already experienced, Eric Bronstrom's broken in full-time, Lassie Thompson is added, Bernard Docker is over here. Once these players get added, sure. Sure, you could say that Ottawa is one of the better young teams in the NHL, and by the time they're all in their primes, they're going to be in a much better position to win the Cup then, maybe even compared to what they were at in 2017 with Carlson, with Hoffman, with Broussard, and all those really good players they have. But today, though, uh, I don't know about that. I uh, really, really don't know. I mean... If you remember in the previous video, we did speak about some of the other stuff that was discussed in this article because the previous video only focused on the aspect of Melnick lying to boost his guy's trade values. But we did highlight that, yes, this article does go over so much other stuff with the Stanley Cup, with the Senators being buyers, the Senators wanting to win, and it's a really long piece. There are so many quotes over here, and Melnick goes on talking about the past, talking about acquiring Matt Duchesne. He says the entire quote, yeah, nobody's blown up a team like I have. And then he talks about the Eastern Conference Finals, how he wanted to win the Cup earlier, how he felt like he could have won the Cup if the Senators just beat Pittsburgh in Game 7. And you know, honestly, I probably could be somewhat inclined to believe it. Like, Eric Carlson was on top of the world back in 2017, man. Had the Ottawa Senators just scored one more goal in that Game 7, and they played in the finals against, what was that, the Nashville year? I think it was the Nashville year. I honestly think they probably could have won. It's just, you know, they didn't. So, I don't know how smart it is, I guess I would say, to reflect on that and take a team that is literally coming off of uh, finishing second last in the league and saying, yeah, next year, you know, we're up there. We, we, are, we can win a cup now, boys. We have all these good players. Tim Stutzla is going to carry us to a cup at 18 years old. Like, if he does, that's cool. Good for him. But I don't really expect that. Do you? Does anybody? Aside from Eugene Melnick? I don't know. Tell me in the comments below what you think. I hope you enjoyed this video. That's Rolls 99. And bye.